My name is Jean Hawkshurst, and I'm an elder in the Kentucky Annual Conference. My appointment, which I've been in for the last six years now, is as an ecumenical staff officer for our Council of Bishops. When the United Methodist Church was formed in 1968, intentional effort was given to ground our denomination within the larger universal church of Jesus Christ. Our founders were clear the Methodist movement is only one part of Christ's whole body and unity with other Christians is a gift Jesus gave us that we are called to receive and nurture. So our book of discipline, our constitution, our theological task, our polity, and our administration all have the foundational theme of unity with other Christians woven throughout. Simply stated, United Methodists believe in as much as possible, we should act in unity with all brother and sister Christians around God's world. Article four of our church constitution begins by saying, the United Methodist Church is part of the church universal which is one body in Christ. Article six goes on to say, the United Methodist Church believes that the Lord of the church is calling Christians everywhere to strive toward unity. And therefore it will pray, seek and work for unity at all levels of church life. And in the book of discipline, under the section about our ecumenical commitment, our founders clearly and straightforwardly stated, Christian unity is not an option. It's a gift to be received and expressed. I could go on and on. Calls to live out unity, the unity that Christ gave to his followers are throughout our scriptures, our book of discipline, our hymnody, and our lived tradition. As I mentioned before, my ministry right now is helping our bishops relate to other Christian denominations or faith communions, as well as other religions on behalf of the United Methodist Church. These ecumenical partners are watching very closely what's going on in our church today, some with a bit of nervous concern. So it's clear about the numbers of Christians I'm talking about. Let me name just a few of our ecumenical partners. The World Methodist Council, made up of 80 different expressions of Methodism from 138 countries. Church World Service, in which we partner with 36 other faith communions in order to provide global, global disaster response and migrant support. The Global Christian Forum, a movement of representatives who meet together to foster mutual respect and address common challenges. Christian Churches Together, a similar movement in the United States, which is currently working to support racial equity within and among the churches. The Pan Methodist Commission, made up of five historically black Methodist churches and the United Methodist Church, who joyfully work together on ministries like Children in Poverty and Joint Chaplaincy accreditation. We're also involved in the National Council of Churches, Regional Councils of Churches, Churches Uniting in Christ, Dialogues and Commissions, and the Concordat Partners I mentioned in the last video. These are watching the United Methodist Church and praying for us. We're an important and foundational church in the ecumenical movement, and what we do will have ripple effects throughout the Universal Church of Jesus Christ. Some of our ecumenical partner churches have already gone through the same decision-making process. Presbyterians, Lutherans, Episcopalians, United Church of Christ, Cooperative Baptists, Disciples of Christ have already gone through similar questioning and taken their votes. They all now allow for marriage and ordination of LGBTQIA plus persons, mostly through a local option or choice. Meanwhile, a couple churches have put conversations on hold with us while we wait and see what will happen in our general conference. In one case, our dialogue with the Episcopal Church that has culminated after decades of dialogue with a proposal for full, for full communion between our churches has been put on hold until 2024 while we all wait and see what will happen. 
One church, the Reformed Church of, in America, is going through the very same decision-making process we are and will probably take their vote sometime this summer. And in addition to personal relationships with the United Methodist Church, this process is affecting the ecumenical movement of the Church of Jesus Christ in general. Because United Methodist giving to the general church was significantly down in 2019, we have not been able to meet our promised full financial commitments to the World Council of Churches, the World Methodist Council, or the, or the National Council of Churches of Christ in the United States. These organizations depend on our gifts. If the trend continues, collective ministries of evangelism, peace building, and anti-racism work are going to suffer. There will be significant personnel and program reductions, which in turn will affect our own disaster relief ministry, interreligious engagement, global dialogues, common advocacy, and other resources. What we do has a ripple effect throughout Christ's universal body. John Wesley once said, separating from a body of living Christians with whom we were before united is a grievous breach of the law of love. And hence, it is only when our love grows cold that we can consider separation. Being a part of another division of the body of Christ will have ramifications. I was raised by the United Methodist Church and I hope to stay United Methodist. We are not perfect and we now have serious battle scars, but I believe what I've been taught by Jesus and his followers, that we are all welcome. People like me who believe that it's way past time to marry and ordain our LGBTQIA brothers and sisters, and people who disagree with that, people of differing hues of skin color and differing abilities and genders. We are all welcome. From my childhood, that's what I have loved about the United Methodist Church. We don't have to all be the same. We love God through Christ because God loves us and saves us every day. We hold our opinions together because we know God loves the person with different opinions just as much as God loves us. And that's what makes us great. We learn from each other in our disagreements, but we do not let them tear us apart. At an annual conference meeting a year or so ago, another pastor whom I have known for 25 years came up to me and told me he was struggling with hating me because I believe differently from him. I think about him a lot. He's in my prayers because that's just not who we are. Jesus's last prayer in the Gospel of John before he was arrested and crucified was that his followers would be one, like he and God are one, so that the world may believe. When we break the church, we diminish our witness and our mission. Instead, I want to be a part of a church with everyone who wants to be a part of it, a movement like what Jesus pulled together. I want to be a part of a church that is affirming and welcoming both to traditionalists and LGBTQ leadership, but also the people whom Kentucky has not done a good job welcoming over those last 25 years. My African-American brothers and sisters, women of various colors and ages who have been denied leadership so many times because churches say they're just not ready. I wanna be a part of a church where there is no slave or free, Greek or Jew, male or female, and I believe an emerging United Methodist Church can become that. So to my traditionalist brothers and sisters, I hope you will stay. I want to be in a church with you. I think all of us staying together looks like the kingdom of God. And sure, it's harder work, but I believe it's worth working for. And to my centrist and progressive brothers and sisters, I also want to be in a church that says the same thing to our LGBTQ leadership, African-American leaders, Hispanic leaders, women leaders, young leadership, differently abled persons. You are wanted. I hope you will stay. 
together we will look like the kingdom of God.